Hello and welcome, it's Glorious Badger here. In my hand I've currently got some Vallejo model colour black. And some airbrush thinner. What are we going to do with this, I wonder? Well, we're going to mix them up and we are going to get some paint on our Lamartis miniature. I'm just going to thin it down. We are going to sling it through an airbrush. Very shortly, once I've got the right consistency. I'm hoping it will be very soon. Hold on. Oh, hello, squiggly line. Love to see it. Righty, okay. Here we go. Here is my Lamartis conversion. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't record the build pro uh, process. Um, maybe in the future, I will try and remember to do that. The skull, I'm not wor really worried about. That's going to be painted ivory. I, I will get some paint on it anyway. But we just want to get a nice sort of even tone down over the entire miniature. So just sling down a couple of layers of this before moving on to the next step. Um, so it's been a while since I've recorded. This is specifically um, for Patreon at the moment. Uh, in future, I would like to do 4K videos. Unfortunately, this beginning section was was recorded at the wrong um, resolution. And unfortunately, that has led to all of the other 4K footage having to get shrunk down to uh, 1080. So I am sorry, but it is uh, hopefully resolved and we won't have that issue again. And these are the wingy things. So we've got the um, Sanguinary Guard jump pack. I've also got the Black Templars Marshall skeleton attached to the top of it. Um, not entirely sure if that was a good move. Uh, Lamartis is supposed to, I think, have a iron uh, halo. So when I did attach that originally, it looks like so you got an iron halo with that spiky skeleton thing behind it. It looked a bit weird, so I decided to drop his iron halo. I'm calling that skeleton thing now the iron halo. It looks the right shape, and there's a skeleton in it, so we're going with it. And uh, yeah, there is high definition. Hand. Lovely. Yeah, as I said, I, it's been a while since I've edited, so I'm looking forward to getting back into it. My main issue is I don't really know the style that I would like to go into for recording the videos. Um, so any comments on that would be appreciated. Okay. Just a few more touch-ups here and there. Make sure we got a sort of even coat. We are going to be doing a lot of glazing and stuff over the top of this. I should say this is less of a an example of how to paint a black armor, more of a follow Badger along and see what he does kind of thing, rather than the specific tutorial. I will be doing uh, black armor tutorials in the future. I was kind of just enjoying the process on this one, sort of dabbling around. And I forgot that I added this bit. Oh, hello. I think I started to... Yeah. My mother used to teach airbrushing, and uh, she used to have people sign their names over and over again, or write their names, or write something uh, using the airbrush. This is my very poor attempt at some squiggly handwriting. Oh, look at that. How is it going? Yeah. Lovely. I thought I'd cut that out. Anyway, there we go. So, this is the first of the 4K footage. As you can see, it's quite a bit brighter. Okay, so we've got Incubi Darkness. Lovely stuff. We're going to mix that with some black. We're going to thin it down, and we're going to do a very rough kind of upper shade, or upper highlight, if you will. If you will. A couple of drops of Vallejo model color black. Some thinner, and then we're gonna smack some incubi darkness in there. It's gonna be a very rough top coat. It's uh, you're not gonna really see anything, but it's just just for my own enjoyment, I guess. Placement of future highlights. It's gonna get the texture as uh, consistency. Let's go with that word instead. 
This brush is on its way out, unfortunately. So it's been relegated to sort of mixing and scenery related duties. So this is sort of a, um, not a highlight, but more of a guide for where the highlights are going to go. So we're going to get the upper thighs, hopefully. Yep. Making sure it's actually coming out. Is it? Yeah, there we go. Right. So upper thighs, um, upper torso. Uh, I'm not fussed about the head, but I'm just leaving the head there just for uh, just so I know where it is and so it doesn't roll off the table for once. So I'm just doing the upper chest right now, as you can see. I'm going to do the upper arms. And that's the upper thigh, upper leg bit. There we go. We're going to do down the back of the legs. I'm going to have to reposition. I have had to move the camera. So unfortunately, I'm not quite used to the position yet. We'll get there eventually. And probably just checking on the back of my hand again. My hand gets quite filthy during this. So here we go. There it is. Just wiggling it back and forth. Oh, I did something there. Here we go. So now we're fast forwarding footage. Straight down the back of the leg. I think I had to add a bit more thinner. I wasn't too happy with it. There we go. Up, uh, up the center of the legs. Side of the leg. Because we're going to have the being lit from his right, our left. Well, up and left. So that is why we're doing the back of the legs and, and also the side. There we go. See? Oop, hello. That was a bit much. Put the, pe put the miniature down and I'm going to pick it back up again. Okay. So you probably. You might just be able to tell the tonal difference. I can just about see it. I know in person I could. So I, I knew vaguely where the highlights would be going when I got around to them, which is going to start about right now. We've got Incubi Darkness. Pure, I guess is the right word. No, we didn't mix any black in. So just uh, thin that down and we're giving it a quick Blast on the top edges. Slightly, trying to be slightly more uh, precise with it. Not quite so worried about, uh, not quite so carefree as we were before. So slightly, slightly more uh, refined. That color coming in. So it's going to go over the, the chest upper half uh, again with. The Inky Darkness before we move on to the next colour. There we go. You can see that you can see that quite nicely now. So we're gonna reach for Dark Sea Blue. A lovely colour, and that is what we're gonna thin down right now. Okay, here we go. Dark Sea Blue onto the upper surfaces. Um slightly pulling the trigger back and deploying a tiny bit of paint. It is quite a bit, it is definitely a bit brighter in the cup. I do wonder if it is sort of separated slightly. However, we are going to make sure we get all the upper surfaces. Here we go, and more of the same really. Just gently, gently, thin coats. Build those colours up. And as I've said before, it doesn't really matter if I've, at least I'm thinking at the time, I, it's not really an issue if I go over the top with it because I'll, I know I'm going to be glazing the colors back down after this. Look at that, that's looking nice. There's some pale blue gray, which I'm now going to bring in. I've mixed a tiny bit of it in, and as you can see, it's quite a bit brighter in there. It is still nice and thin. So we're not going to get, it's not going to suddenly look very bright, but we're going to slowly bring it up, slowly but surely, before, this is just laying the groundwork before we go and do the brushwork. I am using the 0.15 
needle and I'm running the air compressor at probably just under 30 PSI. Uh, I do have the other output on the air compressor set to round about 18 to 20 ish PSI. Depends really what I'm doing. So we're slowly building those colors up. We are going to do a bunch of fast forwarding now as we just build these layers up slowly. Across the tops of the shoulders, the legs, upper torso. Shoulder pads. Waiting for each layer to dry before doing the next one. I'm not really adding any more of the pale blue gray. I'm just building up more layers so it is getting slight it is getting lighter. As you can see. Trying to get those knee pads as well. I did I did uh, the left shoulder pad I was spraying and uh, I completely forgot that that was actually going to be painted red, which we will get around to in probably the next video along with all the gold work. Making sure I get those legs though. Sort of pave way for all the brushwork and hopefully some refining later. But here he is. I definitely like how he's looking, but you, in my mind, he's not reading as black armoured. We need to go in and glaze some other colours in to hopefully give that impression. It's definitely more of a... Well, it's a weird process I'm going through on this one. And there's a thumbs up. There we go. All right. So there is a brush. We have a glaze of shyish purple and black Templars contrast paint combined with either Lamian medium or glaze medium. I'm using that to start to refine some of the general shapes. Now the leg, the fronts of the legs, uh, I do, I'm going to go back and finish later. I, although I was working them on, on them on the video, I wasn't really happy with where I was placing the lights. So that is going to be work to do in the future. So I do apologize about that. However, we do start to add some more dark shade on the those lower. I don't know what those round bits are protecting the sides of the ankles. And that's basically what we're going to do. Uh, fast forward shoulder pads. I don't know why I'm spending time on that right shoulder pad, left shoulder pad. Uh, I'm painting that red later, so that's basically a waste of time. Gonna glaze, just gonna wait for each layer to dry and then glaze in some more. When glazing, you've got you have to wait for the layer of glaze to dry. Otherwise you'll peel it up and you have to start all over again. Trying to get all these shapes on the sides of the legs and the boots. The torso, those individual ribs. Be very careful around those bits to make sure we get both the highlight in and enough black in so it looks, so it reads as black armor. As this is a very watered down glaze. Very. It's not a strong one. We will be doing this, the stronger phase next with pure black. But this is just uh, to get us going on the way. I will be doing all the gold and red shoulder pad stuff later in a future video. Good to get back to um, it's good to get back to the editing. I've got a, a long way to go, a lot to remember. The voiceovers themselves that maybe I should be writing a script instead of just watching the video playback and commenting over it. 
make sure I hit all the points I need to hit before waffling on in a different direction. But as you can see, we do go back and reinforce, reinforce all of the shades. It is starting to come together, in my humble opinion. Purple is a bit of a default colour for me. I do like to try and work that into a lot of paint jobs where possible. Definitely more of a subconscious thing than the thing I plan on. It just kind of happens. But I think uh, a dark mid-tone before going all the way down to black is a good call. Um, does add a bit of surface variation colour-wise. Bit of visual interest. And I pick it up again. And the camera, the lighting has changed. I can't remember exactly what happened. But here we go. Got black ink here, which we're going to make a glaze up. Hopefully. Lighting's definitely changed. I honestly don't know why it's... That looks like a very strong glaze. <laughs> that looks like a very strong glaze indeed. But we are going to use that in our darkest shadows. Darkest parts of the armour. Because we do want to try and find that mid-tone where the, the highlights are interesting, but the armour still reads as black rather than a dark purple armour or something like that. Now I know a lot of black armours, if you break if you break down the colours, they aren't all like literally black. They are very, very dark shades of varying colours. So I have just contradicted myself to some extent. Which is why initially I worked some purple in there. But I, I do think I do think you need to use black ink or some sort of black paint to make it read as black. This is what I'm doing across the torso right there. I must say I am enjoying this model. It was a nice kit bash. It was Thankfully, I managed to save some money via eBay and trading some miniature parts. Uh, but this could have been a very expensive miniature if I'd had to purchase all the kits separately that I did. But uh, what happened there? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go to the brushwork and start highlighting. So here we go. That was dark sea blue with a touch of pale grey blue. We are going to start highlighting all the areas which we want to sort of focus on. Now obviously the I think at this point in my mind I was thinking I definitely wanted to paint have the majority of the light at the upper torso uh, and around the face. But you will see as time progresses that that does change a little bit. So the light, as tends to be for me, uh, comes from the miniatures, from the miniatures point of view, the upper right, or as you're looking at it, the upper left. So I do try and imagine where the light will fall and try and hit those areas with the light. Obviously, light. That would be just one singular point of light, but light bounces around. There can be other lights and stuff. So really just an artistic thing. I That shoulder pad, I've still forgotten that I'll be painting it red later. So I'm wasting time doing that. Get those bits. Sort of, I think I'm doing a tiny bit of stippling there, kind of roughing it in. I'm looking forward to doing a specific black armor videos probably do a, a couple of different ones uh, but this this is not it this is more of a a journey what i did right and what i did wrong i no doubt i will be doing some stuff wrong uh, but this is this is generally just how i like to paint sort of push paint around see if it works if it doesn't not the end of the world i can always paint over it again 
and all paint off camera, just like that. Trying to get the back of the back, or the, t the top of the back where the shoulders are, where the uh, shoulder blades are even. There he is, looking lovely. What am I doing now? Oh, dark sea blue. What are we doing? Refining some of those lights, those highlights that we put in. Oh, we're doing some of the other other highlights, extending them a little bit. Doing some of the dreaded edge highlighting. My something I don't really do huge amounts of. I like to I like to do just enough, but generally I am quite happy just stopping once we've got all the important bits and then ignoring the rest of it. Doing our best though this time around to get everything edge highlighted. That really not the most exciting thing though. It is rather tedious. There you go, put it down, probably had a cup of tea. And continuing onwards with the delightful edge highlighting. It's so much fun and painting off camera as well. Well done. Round of applause for myself. We have added slightly more. Pale grey blue to the mix here. Brightening these edges up a smidgen. And drifting off camera again. <laughs> it's like one of my Twitch streams. Speaking of which, follow me at twitch.tv forward slash glorious badger. That was a beautiful segue. What a beautiful segue. Very, very well practiced. Almost professional levels. Not really. Okay, so yeah, we are still edge highlighting. And we are fast forwarding at quite the speed as well. I haven't cut too much of this out. Um, just try and let everyone see exactly what goes on. So this is pale, pale grey blue again, which we are going to use to add some more brightness to the miniature. Off camera as well. So lucky. I do apologize. I will get better at this. Uh, so I am going to do a little bit of edge highlighting with this color. Try and get the inside of the gorget as well, like that. Try and get these ribs. I don't know what they're called. Bits of the armor which look like rib cages. Get the inside of the arm along that little plane of light right there, where the light should bounce, in my opinion, in my mind at least. In the inside, outside of that leg, get the hands. Now, weirdly, there's one part of this miniature I realized I didn't really pay attention to, and that is his, the miniature's right arm, forearm, in fact, forearm guard. I completely neglected somehow. I sort of painted little bits and pieces of it, but not as uh, fully as I painted everything else, so I must go and do that. Gonna get that upper right thigh right outside leg there. Bringing those colors up nice and bright. We're probably going to end up going all the way up to pure white at some point, but not on this video. We will not be adding the finishing touches to the armor uh, until, until we're truly ready. Unfortunately, we do have the gold to do. Uh, so blends and stuff are going to be, got to be very neat. We're going to have to be very neat when it comes to the gold is trying to replicate blends uh, and glazes. The tough one. So I don't know what I'm doing here. Getting some more paint on the brush, probably, by the looks of it. Looks to be some pure pale grey blue, or maybe just more of it. 
Oh, well, like that was a bit much. Get that edge highlight right there. Stipple on some of that, get these rivets. The rivets occupy a different bit of space to that, to the uh, chest bit, the rib bit. So they will hit light, light will hit them differently. So you can afford to paint uh, the majority of them at a different brightness. Even if even if they reside in shadow, you can you can bring them up a bit in brightness, potentially all the way up to some of the brightest highlight colors you use. Which is my intention here on it, certainly on his left side. I'm gonna edge highlight the right leg. Basically just gonna edge highlight all that sort of stuff. Bring in a few tighten those tighten those highlights a little bit more. Each time, just getting a bit tighter with that color. Because we are going to do another glaze after this with uh, pure black. Just to refine it a little bit more and hopefully make it look all right. I'm certainly like liking how it's looking at the moment. It's It's looking a bit scrappy. Hopefully we can pull it out of out of uh, looking awful. By the time we finish this miniature. Okay, what are we missing? So those those rivet things. The edges of the armor. So on the backs of the legs, I am trying to go for a couple of points of light. So on the right hand of his right leg, so he's got the very side of it and also sort of Almost on the inside leg as well, there is a slightly less bright highlight there. Continuing to do all the highlighting. Paying a bit of attention to that left left forearm guard, but the right the right one's just getting completely neglected at this point. And the only other thing I'm looking at this miniature now is his his right shoulder pad. I need to probably fix that highlight. It's looking like it's been in the wrong position. I need to move um, the chunk of it down, sort of well, across the shoulder pad uh, to what might be considered the top of the shoulder pad. It will be picked up in a future video, though. Hopefully. That's the inside of the left leg I'm trying to get. Okie dokie. So, da -da 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 -da. More, a bit, bit more edge highlighting. So I have been washing this paint, watering this paint down a lot. Um, so each layer is not ridiculously bright. And it dries a lot darker, so building these layers up, it does take a bit of time. Me sketching in a couple of lights for the leg. I'm not entirely sold on the, where I put it. Looking at it now, I'm still not sold. It is a strange one. There we go. Also, if you are watching on YouTube, please make sure you're following. Hit that uh, subscribe button. And the old bell for notifications, then you won't miss a thing. <laughs> I am going to be putting up videos specifically on YouTube as well. Um, so do make sure you are following and you will see stuff there. But here is here's all the highlights. I must say I am liking how he's looking at the moment. Generally, I'm not entirely sold on some of the leg highlights. They look a bit... They look a bit weird. That is something that I'm going to have to go and rectify. However, not on this video. We're just going to twirl him around a little bit more. Yes. Before we go in and glaze. Hopefully soon, instead of just... I'm just looking at this miniature on the screen, and I'm pointing. Yeah, that's the legs. I'm just pointing out the legs. I'm not happy with them. Um, but that is, uh, yeah, that's definitely future video. 
eventually future video or you'll just see it fixed we shall see there's the glaze medium i'm using there is the black and also i mix in some black ink make this sort of heavy glaze and hopefully we can go and tighten up these highlights some more unfortunately we have got the part of the recording where my new recording system caught me unawares. I, I was recording away and unfortunately the entire two terabyte drive just got eaten up by uh, this footage way quicker than I realized. I wasn't quite paying attention. So unfortunately, well, we are going to go and refine and tighten up these highlights some more with black glaze. It, the footage is just going to cut out, unfortunately. We are going to be just continuing to glaze in black. So at the beginning of the next video, you'll see where we've gotten to. But that is the only bit you're going to be missing out right now, is me just refining all these highlights with black glazes. That is it. There's nothing new has happened. Um, and you won't be missing anything else. I've learned my lesson. However, I think he is starting to look pretty snazzy. Got to work on the red shoulder pads. Uh, we've got to bring in all the gold and stuff. We've got all the skulls and stuff. Got his weaponry. Got the jump pack. We've got a whole lot to go. So please tune in for the next one. And thank you. And goodbye.